All right, you guys. Um, uh, earlier today, I, uh, I checked out a movie. Uh, Disney sent me the Blu-ray of A Wrinkle in Time to review, and I didn't see this in the theaters. Uh, and I was looking forward to seeing this because, you know, it looked fantastic in terms of color, uh, in terms of uh, these fantastical elements. And uh, we were going to be sort of wrinkling up the universe and traveling to all kinds of cool places. And uh, I thought, oh, man, this could be really, really cool. And I was excited to see it. And uh, I, uh, I thought some of it was actually pretty sweet. Just looking for a graphic here. Let me stick it here. Okay, there we go. Um, but uh, ultimately, the movie felt a little bit like it wasn't for me, you know? I'm very anxious to watch this again with my daughter because I love the inclusiveness of the picture and the diversity of the picture, which I think were very big, um, uh, you know, platforms for the director, Ava DuVernay, who incorporated this book that's been around for a long time, which I haven't read. Maybe I will read it uh, with my kid at one point. Uh, but it's, it's a classic, apparently, and... Um, the idea of transporting these visuals from the novel into a movie uh, seemed quite daunting until, of course, we have the technology that can make us believe anything today. Unfortunately, we are inundated with lots of fantastical imagery, and that's just not enough, I think, to transport us. What this movie kind of reminded me of is more of a kid-friendly version of uh, Chris Nolan's Interstellar where we get a sense of a, a father who has disappeared and we have a, a, a couple of children that um, are entreated to go and find him and bring him back to their family and bring them back to their regular life. And they, uh, they have to do a lot of traveling and a lot of exploration to find them. And it's really a movie about the power of love and the power of, uh, the, of light against dark forces. We are introduced to, uh, to this sort of darkness, this entity of darkness, and it uh, uh, overtakes certain characters characters within the movie. Um, there's some pretty big cameos in here. Zach Galifianakis is in here. Chris Pine plays the father. Um, and famously, the um, uh, the misses, the, uh, these ethereal beings that have lived for millennia, uh, are portrayed by Oprah Winfrey, making her return to the, uh, to the movie screens after a long period away. Reese Witherspoon's in there, and Mindy Kaling is in there. So very interesting casting. I do feel like the movie suffers from everybody being in awe of everything that's around them all the time. And I think back to the fantasy work that I love, whether it's Avengers or Star Wars or whatever, or even a Avatar, which had lots of awestruck moments in it as well. But there, I, there has to come a time when the actors just sort of feel their roots and they aren't in awe of all the green screen elements to be added in later. And the movie doesn't really lift from that, in my estimation. It almost reminded me of uh, early Harry Potter films when we had so many shots of the kids just going, I can't believe that, I can't believe, you know. And um, I, I, I don't think it's, you know, an acting problem per se. I think that it was just uh, people being sort of incredulous that it was all coming together and Disney supported these, uh, these grand visions. And, you know, ultimately it, it is also in competition with other super grand visions out there. And I review so many of those things that I, I couldn't help but you know, compare and contrast this to the beautiful imagery in a Marvel movie or a Star Wars movie or, uh, you know, a, a ton of other things that I, I watch. Even uh, massive, cool Netflix shows these days are incredible. Um, so it, I, I think that it's a great idea that this thing got made. I know it didn't do extremely well at the box office. It came in dis a bit of a disappointment. It also has the encumbrance of having to be a bit of an origin story and having to define the universe and explain everything. I had problems with the fact that these magical beings um, were such... Uh, I guess they were trying to convey a familiarity with the earthlings that they were connecting with, but they just took from so much earth culture in their initial um, connection with these kids that it looked like a kind of a missed opportunity. These were beings that have existed across dimension and time and space and and um, I just think that they could have been a little bit more fantastical and, and instead they look like they were in really funky clothes and, and uh, lots of sparkles and stuff. Uh, I did like Michael Pena's bit in there and I truthfully I think Zach, Zach Kalifanakis when he isn't being... Um, uh, so sarcastic and such a you know a funny comedic actor and 
he's got a good physicality about him. But there is an earthy, believable sort of uh, break your heart quality about the way that he connects with people. Um, and, and he he twists it and, and pokes fun at it in a lot of his other movies. But he's got some really powerful connect with the kids moments in here. And uh, I was really impressed with that. And I also, I love Chris Pine as an actor too. I like his fearlessness and, and the stuff that he does. So it was fun to watch him. Uh, and, you know, Reese Witherspoon and, and Oprah Winfrey and Mindy Kaling are all fun to watch as well. Um, they do feel like they're kind of struggling in their dresses a little bit as they're, they're trying to play out of their dresses, you know? Um, like they really don't look like they can move, which seems like a bit of a, a, a hampering there. Uh, and the kids are great. The kids were actually really, really fun to watch. Um, so I, you know, honestly, I felt like this movie wasn't really for me, but I was intrigued and I do applaud the, uh, the efforts to build it. It looked lovely on my screen. I enjoyed watching all the behind the scenes stuff. There's a, a short blooper reel. They've got pretty good music in this thing. Sade actually has a song in there. I'm a fan of hers. Uh, so I, I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. Uh, but I am looking forward to showing my daughter this movie when she grows up a little bit. I'm gonna give a wrinkle in time on Blu-ray a 6 out of 10 